Hey, what's up everybody? If you're gonna tow a trailer with your Ford Mach-E, you're gonna need trailer wiring. It's required by law. Let's break down that install. You'll need the tools seen here to complete this installation. So to get this install started, we're gonna remove this large underbody panel here to get access to our frame rails. The instructions state that there are 16 10 millimeter bolts and four push clips that need to come out. We did identify two extra 10 millimeter bolts that also need to come out. So we've got five on the driver's side, two in the middle, five on the passenger side. Continuing on the passenger side, we've got another three. And the final three on the driver's side. All right, we've got four push clips on the bottom side. We've got one here, one over here, up in this recess, and same on the opposite side. We're gonna use a trim panel tool on this one. Next, we're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pop out the last two. Next, we're gonna open the rear hatch to remove the uh, taillights out of the driver and passenger side. We'll get started by removing the plastic covers. That'll expose the two eight millimeter bolts behind them. And we'll go ahead and remove those with an eight millimeter ratchet. Now we can repeat this process on the passenger side. So to remove the tail lights, which you always gotta be a little careful, we tried some different pride tools. Uh, this one was a little tricky at first, but we found that just by grabbing it with our fingertips on each side and just kind of giving it a straight pull backwards, we were able to get it removed easily. After removing the tail light, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the connector by pushing in and pulling straight out. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the driver's side tail light. We did notice this one was, it seemed to be a little bit tighter. So what we did is we took our trim panel remover, we kind of just worked it slowly around the edge. We were able to work it out just enough and we found that it kind of works those clips out a little bit and it helps that tail light come straight out. Okay, so now that we have our tail lights out, we're ready to install our T-connector converter box. So the yellow and brown wire is gonna go over to the driver's side of the vehicle. The red and green wire connector is gonna go over to the passenger side. We found it easiest if we run the connector for the tail lights underneath this fascia panel. So we're gonna use this thick piece of wire here. We're gonna run it down this fascia panel, starting at the top, and then we'll uh, go underneath and, and feel it out and pull it down through the bottom, leaving about six to eight inches exposed at the top for us to pull it back up. All right, we're gonna go ahead and attach our driver's side wire, wrap it with a little bit of electrical tape so it comes up nice and smooth. And we should be able to pull it straight up and into position. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and attach our mating end of the T-connector harness into the factory taillight connector, making sure to get the clip in the right direction and it'll snap right into place. Now we're gonna route the passenger side T-connector harness over to the passenger side from the rear of the vehicle. Now we wanna make sure to follow any cross members. We wanna stay as high and as far back as possible. Make sure that the wires are not gonna to touch anything moving or hot. So we're gonna run it up uh, along the bumper beam and we're gonna keep it nice and tight so that it doesn't drag and, and, and possibly fall down below the bumper fascia. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and do our fishing technique on the opposite side. Go ahead and tape them up like we did on our driver's side. Yeah, we should be able to just pull it right on up. Now that we have our driver's side and our passenger side connectors connected to the uh, factory tail light connectors, we're gonna go ahead and, and find our power wire from our converter box. Um, here we can see just it hanging out slightly, it's the black wire. Um, we're gonna use our provided heat shrink butt connector and attach it to one end of the wire 
and attach our long strand of power wire that'll run to the front of the vehicle to the other end of the buck connector. Now we can use our butane torch and shrink it down. Now we're ready to run our power wire to the front of the vehicle using our spool of provided wire. That said, we want to be careful of suspension parts, anything that gets hot, anything that moves. So we've got a uh, about a one inch uh, tube channel here, square tube channel, that we're going to run the power wire through. We can actually get it through by just slowly pushing it through. We've got a couple of holes where we can catch it along the way and try to help assist us along the path. But uh, I think this is going to be the best way to keep this power wire completely protected from the elements and also keep it safe from hot or moving parts. Okay, we're ready to connect our uh, ground wire here uh, with an eyelet. Um, I did find right about here there is a fascia support bracket. Um, at the top of it is a 10 millimeter bolt attached to the frame. We're gonna go ahead and remove that bolt and then attach our eyelet and reattach the, the bolt. Anytime we have wires underneath the vehicle, we wanna try to bundle them up and keep them taut. We're gonna pull these tight, try to get them in bundled and uh, zip tied up as best we can. Now we're ready to reconnect our driver's side tail light. We're gonna go ahead and plug in that connector till it clicks. And we're gonna take that connector and kind of shove it way down in here so it's nice and out of the way. We don't have a whole lot of real estate in here to play around with, so get it lined up and push it right back into place. Now we're ready to reinstall our two eight millimeter bolts and our protective plastic covers. Okay, now we're gonna repeat that process on the passenger side. Okay, we ran our power wire under the driver's side of the vehicle. We now need to connect it to the battery, which is located in the front area of this vehicle. That said, there's a lot of panels in here, so we're gonna start by removing this top panel. We're gonna work our way over to the sides. And then we'll remove the large cargo area in the middle last. And we got two more panels here on the sides. We're ready to remove our frunk pan. So we've identified eight 10 millimeter bolts. We've got one, two, three. The fourth is up top here. Passenger side top is number five. And inside the pan, we've got six, seven, and eight. And two T30, uh, Torque bolts here in the very front, which is one and two. Okay, so we noticed as we were pulling out this pan, we've got the emergency release connector, uh, connector here. We're gonna go ahead and push down and pull that out. And we've got our light connection here, push down and pull that right out. Now that we've got our lines disconnected, we can go ahead and pull this pan right out of here. We do need to get to the black power wire that we ran from the rear of the vehicle. To do that, we've identified a hole in the bottom of the frunk area. Um, that said, we're gonna use a fish stick, which is a fiberglass rod. It's about four feet in length. You can use a fishing pole at home if you have one, something that's narrow. Um, but you wanna use something fiberglass, avoid metal uh, if you can, but that will allow us to run that rod down, tie our power wire with some electrical tape and then pull it right back up to the top. We're gonna zip tie our power wire back here just to make sure it's nice and tight. We've got a positive battery terminal cover that we're gonna remove here. Okay, we're gonna trim a little bit of our excess power wire off here because we're gonna add an inline fuse. Strip about a quarter of an inch of the uh, shielding off. 
And we're gonna add our heat shrink butt connector again. And then we're gonna add our inline fuse. We'll go ahead and cut it in half. Gonna strip one side for our the other end of our power wire. And then we're gonna strip the other end for an eyelet that will go on the positive battery terminal. All right, so now we're gonna use our butane torch to get both ends of the butt connector. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and remove this terminal here. Go ahead and remove it temporarily just to attach our fuse link to our converter box. And then I like to add a zip tie here just to make it nice and clean. Now we're ready to add our 15 amp fuse. Put our cover back on and we'll go test it just to make sure everything's working before we put it all back together. Okay, now that we've tested everything, we've got it all hooked up, we went back, everything's working great. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put everything back in its reverse order. As we start to uh, get to the end of our install here, we've decided we're gonna use a uh, four flat bracket, give it a nice clean professional look. These are available at your uh, local U-Haul store. Um, we're gonna go ahead and mount it here right next to one of the uh, under panel uh, bolts. Using a 730 seconds drill bit, we're gonna go ahead and put uh, the two holes for the bracket. And it comes with mounting hardware to uh, install it as well. We're gonna go ahead and insert our four flat connector through the bracket. Pull it nice and tight so it stays. And then we're gonna cover it with the uh, dust cover provided. Now we can go ahead and take our excess four flat wire. We're gonna bring it up behind and we're gonna zip tie it to the hitch up above. We are now ready to reinstall our underbody panel on the rear of the vehicle, so we're gonna go ahead and bring it up. We're gonna use our large push clips to get it aligned and hold it into place while we put in the rest of our 10 millimeter bolts. That concludes our installation on the Ford Mach-E. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the product seen here, or you're interested in an installation by a U-Haul hitch professional, please visit us at uhaulhitches.com.